A young couple buys a house with a tragic past, where tenants still roam the halls. Something in that house was trying to get my attention. While a hidden terror waits to unleash their darkest fears. Oh my God. There was something evil in my home. Andrew! In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see Someone's in my room. and the things we fear, there are doors when they are open. Nightmares become reality. Come here, Bull. Come on, baby. You want your ball? You want to catch a ball, baby? In the summer of 2012, oh. Jamie and Darren Shriver find a house to move into just in the nick of time. Come on, Bull. Oh, that's my good girl, Lucy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> they were in the process of buying a condo when the sale fell through. We wanted to start, you know, trying to have a family, um, which you need room to grow. <laughs> Ready, go! Oh, good job. At the last minute, the association denied us because of our dogs. They said that they will not allow pit bulls. Come here, Lucy. Come on, baby. We did pit bull rescue through the years, so we never considered getting rid of any of our pit bulls. We had to take the first thing we could get at that point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A few days after settling in, Darren is organizing boxes. When we first moved in the house, I remember feeling like something was watching us. It was odd, but it wasn't odd enough to where I was thinking it was anything out of the ordinary. It was just a weird feeling. <clears throat> the history on the house according to the newspapers and the neighbors, was that the uh, family of four had passed away of carbon monoxide poisoning. Honey, have you seen that box with the dishes? Or... Oh. I think it belonged to one of the children. Yeah. It's so sad what happened. We'd known about that house for a while because of what had happened there. Hey, are you okay moving into this house? They assured us it's safe. It can't happen again. Once I found out that all the gas appliances had been ripped out, everything was full electrical, and you know that situation couldn't happen again, it it put me at ease, and I was willing to give it a shot. Hey, come on.
The couple works opposite shifts, and finding time at home together is tough. Darren's gone most nights working security. Jamie's gone during the day. I was working retail from 9.30 to 8 o'clock at night. I saw what appeared to be a child's silhouette pass past the TV, and it blacked the TV out behind it. It was very brief, but it was very distinct. Did you see that? What? I just saw a child, the shadow of a child. I don't know. OK. You've been working too much. No. I saw it. It walked right in front of the television. I didn't see it. I just talked it up to, OK, it was just the shadow of the room or, you know, something, you know, played tricks on your eyes. But he, he was very adamant that he saw a little child shadow. I saw it. I know what I saw. I've worked in a psychiatric environment. I'm not hallucinating. I don't believe in ghosts, but I know what I saw. It was during the daylight hours. I had worked the night before and was sleeping. I kept hearing a voice, a low voice. I looked up and I saw briefly what appeared to be a female with yellowish hair. That was enough there to really put me on guard. My heart's racing. Soon after moving into a new home with a tragic past, Darren Shriver wakes to a vision he can't explain. There was no really facial features other than her uh, eyes were black. I didn't mean to startle you. Babe? You OK? You're not going to believe me. I think I saw her. The woman who died in the house. Oh, did you have a nightmare? No. I was awake. I know what I saw. 
Between him just being exhausted from work and his sleep apnea, I thought maybe he was dreaming. Good morning. It's Saturday. It's time to get up already. Much as I love sleeping in, we have a lot to do, and I have to go to the store. It's time to feed the dogs anyway. I want one. Did you hear that? Yeah. Jamie and I both heard a child's voice say, I want one, plain as day. Do you think some kid got in the yard and? I'm like, OK, maybe the neighbor kids you know, saw the dog outside and was like, oh, I want one. There were no kids outside. At that point, it became no doubt in my mind, there's something here in this home. That came from inside this house. It's got to be one of the children who died here. I never believed in ghosts. I never believed in paranormal. That wasn't what I believed. I always believed that there's a heaven and you go there, but I didn't believe that there was this lingering. I didn't think you could get trapped. I was just to that point where I was about to fall asleep, you know, deep sleep for the night. I heard this really dark, raspy growl in my ear, and I thought it was my dog. Hey, Bull, it's OK. Go back to sleep. I swatted my arm and told him to shush. Well, when I swatted, I didn't feel anything. So I rolled over, and Bull's not there. Bull? In my head, I'm like, OK, that was really weird. It doesn't make sense. I know what I heard, but nothing's there to make that sound. Not having a whole lot of paranormal experience, it kind of took me a little bit to you know, see maybe something is going on. Not feeling threatened, Jamie believes she can live with the ghost in their home. I wasn't scared of it, because we hadn't had anything you know, that it tried to hurt us. I was fine with it as long, you know, as it was friendly. One morning after working the night shift, Darren is home sleeping.
Darren Shriver has sensed harmless spirits in his house until now. I was laying in bed one morning. I had worked night shift. All of a sudden, I felt my leg jerk. Something grabbed my leg and uh, pulled me halfway down the bed. To pull me, it took some force. I, I felt like this thing's getting physical. I remember feeling like a heat sensation on my leg. And I looked down, and there was like a reddish print, like a handprint. What the? Darren is alarmed. If the ghosts of the family who died tragically are haunting his home, why are they turning on him? Or is something darker at work? I knew then we were dealing with something that was not on the good side of nature. Not wanting to alarm his wife, Jamie, Darren decides to keep the incident to himself. A few weeks after the attack, Darren is plagued by recurring nightmares. dreams that something was after him you know like those dreams where you actually feel like you're awake the whole time you know so it was like he wasn't sleeping he would just wake up exhausted and you get to that point of exhaustion and it affects everything else ah! you okay I just had a bad dream. Same one? Yeah, it's the same one. Well, you don't have to snap my head off. I'm sorry, I'm just really tired. Can we try and get some sleep? He would, you know, say things to upset me and I would just, you know, fire back and I mean, I don't know how many times we just exploded and screaming, and, and we're not those people. I didn't say anything because I didn't want to worry Jamie. But something was in that house at that time that was trying to communicate with me or scare the living hell out of me. As the nightmares continue, Darren begins to grow ill. His fatigue is compounded by constant nausea. Maybe. How are you feeling? And I thought about, well, maybe it's a stomach flu going around, you know, the bug. But the nausea was unexplainable. There you go. How's that feel? Better? Darren begins to wonder if he's experiencing the same symptoms as those who died in the house. It's just a weird feeling. The symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning are very similar to flu-like symptoms. You gonna be okay? I'll be all right. Okay, just go to sleep, all right? Get some rest. I love you. Oh, yeah. At that point, I was terrified because I don't want to lose my husband. He's my best friend, he's everything, and Something is physically wrong with him that I can't fix, I can't help. A few days later, while still exhausted, Darren is back on the night shift. Jamie is out grocery shopping, and the dogs are home in their crates. With the rescue, how we had it set up at the time, with it being cold, we didn't want them being outside. All the dogs were put in cages. Um, and just because 
they do have Houdini complexes. <laughs> um, they were also padlocked with chains so that they couldn't break the door and get out. open the door and I hear my alarm going off. I had a handful of groceries. Whoa, what the? And I feel something brush by me and it like almost tripped me. All right, all right. What? No. Amy Shriver has just witnessed the most horrifying moment of her life, her dog Lucy being struck and killed by a passing car. I ran outside and there she was. I couldn't scream, I couldn't, like inside was just, you can't physically make any sounds. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> He was around 10.30 in the evening. Jamie had called me and says, you need to come home. She was out of breath, and she goes, Lucy's gone. Lucy was very special to us, very dear. We loved her like our own child. What happened? I don't know. She was locked in her crate in the, the locked back bedroom. I don't understand. I didn't know she was out. <laughs> Jamie, come in here. You're not going to believe this. Oh my God, it looks like she chewed her way out. Her cage door had been unlocked. Her cage had physically been moved into the hallway. The back of it was all bloody from her trying to chew her way out. That was the second I knew that there was something evil in my home. That's the day that I was ready to battle. That is it. Whatever is in this house, whatever you are, whoever you think you are, you are out of here. Leave us alone. At that point, it was gloves off. This was the last straw. Dara knows he must do something to help his family. He invites his old acquaintance, paranormal expert Stephen Lachance, to investigate. Hi. Hello. Hey, hey how Steve. you doing? You doing OK? Yeah, yeah, it's just less. The moment I saw Darren, I was shocked. His eyes were sunken. Um, you could tell he hadn't been sleeping. Uh, he He's a very happy-go-lucky kind of person. All of that was gone. Stephen brings along Teresa Reevy, a sensitive. But before they start, 
Jamie has an announcement. We really hope you can help us, especially with a baby on the way. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm so happy for you both. We're going to do what we can. Now, I understand that two adults, two children died in this house under tragic circumstances. It was really sad. I, I think I saw the woman. And we both believe that we heard one of the children. Well, from what you told me earlier, I believe that we're dealing with something far more dangerous than human spirits. It's likely demonic. When you hear someone say that it was big enough to open a door, it was big enough to move a dog in a dog crate, it caused that dog to chew through a cage. Instantly, you go, this is not your normal haunting. So what can we do? Well, Teresa's going to take a walk around the house. I'm going to use what's called a ghost box to detect any spirit voices. And if we detect anything demonic, we will do a cleansing. I sensed the woman that passed in that house. She was very quiet, very timid, almost like she was afraid. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a short figure kind of rush past. It looked almost like a child. The more I walked through the house, it was so intense. It was like I couldn't breathe. The air felt thick. It was a very bad energy that I was feeling. A demonic energy will feed off a tragedy. So sorrow, sudden deaths, a child dying, tragedy attracts negative things. Teresa finds herself drawn to the dog room. Hey there. How you doing? <laughs> that room was so full of negative energy, it almost made me sick to my stomach. It was like hitting a wall, is what it was like. There was enough energy in that room to probably pick up one of those crates and move it or throw it. Strong boy. A sensitive finds herself in harm's way while investigating a haunted home. I looked out of the corner of my eye, and there it was. It was like a black, almost like a cloud-like thing. A very dark, inhuman spirit, more demonic. Teresa immediately lights Sage to protect herself and to chase the dark entity away. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And did you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander the world seeking the ruin of souls? I was saying this prayer, and I watched this mass leave this room. We were on a chase to get it out of the house. I've just seen it. There's a demon in this house. There's no time to waste. Will you leave these people alone? 
suddenly, a voice speaks through the ghost box. They were telling it to leave, and it kept saying repeatedly, no. I really could not sense the woman at that point. Teresa doesn't sense the spirits of the children in the house either. It does not mean they were not there. Negative things will not stay with what I do. Good things in the house won't leave unless they really want to leave. How do you feel? Feels good. You just felt that darkness gone, and the atmosphere was so different. I didn't feel afraid, and I knew everything was going to be OK. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ethan. This ghost box thing really works. <laughs> yes, it does. Before we leave, I have some advice. It's time to focus on the positive things in your life. You're having a baby. When we leave the house, I always have a talk. Find the things in your life that are good um, to move on and go into back into a normal life where you're not living in the midst of the paranormal all the time. And don't play with one of these. You got it. After the cleansing, the Shrivers follow Stephen's advice to think positive thoughts, and the house remains free of paranormal activity. In the spring of 2014, Andrew Shriver is born. Life with Andrew, it's never dull. He's just the brightest thing in our life. But one evening, Darren has a lapse in judgment. He ignores Stephen's warning and downloads a ghost box. My cousin had passed away, and uh, I was a little upset. I downloaded this app from my phone, and I'm thinking, oh, yeah, whatever. If there's anybody here, talk to me. Hi, Holy. Only one person in the world called me Baldy, and it was him. I started seeing things out the corner of my eye, like a quick movement. Is there someone here with me? Darren, what are you doing? Is that a ghost box? Stephen warned you not to mess around with stuff like that. We have a baby. Get rid of it. OK, it's gone. It's gone. I was like, no, don't, you know, that could possibly open it again. So he deleted it right away, and we thought, OK, we're, we're safe. A few nights later, Jamie hears baby Andrew crying. Out of nowhere, at like 3 o'clock in the morning, Andrew just started screaming bloody murder. And it wasn't the cry that I'm hungry. It wasn't the cry that I need to change. It was, I'm scared to death. Come get me. Mama's coming, Andrew. Andrew? Andrew. 
Andrew. Oh God. Andrew? But it was only a nightmare, a terrifying nightmare. Every night, it was a nightmare of something terrible happening to him. Like, one night, it was he got kidnapped. The next night, he drowned in the bathtub. Once again, Andrew is crying. But this time, Jamie is certain she is not dreaming. For more of Haunting, visit DestinationAmerica.com. Ever since their house was cleansed of a demon, Jamie and Darren Shriver have slept soundly. But one night, their baby cries out in distress as if he were not alone. Danger has passed, but baby Andrew has clearly seen something. The activity started again when our son was six months old. He would just scream and keep his eyes closed like he was terrified to open them. It's back. It was that stupid ghost box app you downloaded. Stephen warned you not to mess around with that stuff. Darren admits the ghost box he used to communicate with spirits is to blame. I knew that I'd open the doorway, thinking that it's just a toy or just a, an, a phone app, and find out in reality this is the real deal. My family needed to be protective immediately, especially my young son. Too ashamed to contact the first investigators who cleansed the house, Darren calls upon Pastor Fred Wells, he and his wife, Shauna, a sensitive, agree to perform a blessing of the family and the house. Lord, we ask for your protection and your blessing over your servant, Jamie, during and after this blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Before we got started, I actually pray over them, making a sign of the cross and anointing them with oil so none of these things can attack them during this house blessing. We cast any unclean thing in here out and remove you from this property. There are no good spirits. They're not supposed to be here. I don't communicate with them. I don't care to know who they are, why they're there, what their name is. They're all evil, even if they appear to be friendly. My only job is to get rid of them. We cast any unclean thing in here out and remove you from this property. You must leave in the name of Jesus Christ. We then went to the rest of the house. We anointed all the doors and the closets and the windows. Now let's hold hands in a circle and pray. Lord, we ask for your blessing and your presence to dwell within this house for your servants, Darren, Jamie, and Andrew. Andrew! The baby, he started crying, and I got a chill up my back that something was in his room. You two stay here and keep praying. We'll go check on the baby. Lord, we ask for your blessing. No! No! The demon is here. What? There was a presence over him. It was no form, just a mist, and it was hovering over the baby. We need to finish it now. Give me your hand. We 
rebuke you and cast you out now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We rebuke you and cast you out now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost! done. It's gone. <laughs> it just felt so great to have all that darkness gone. I didn't have to fear that my husband was going to wake up sick. I didn't have to fear that my son was going to be scared, terrified in the middle of the night. I didn't have to, you know, worry about, you know, our dogs being hurt and tortured anymore. And it, it's been peaceful. Since the cleansing, the Shriver's home has been free of demonic activity. And with the terror behind them, Jamie and Darren have been free to build the life together they had always wanted. Me and Jamie right now are so close. We do everything together. The three of us have become that family now, and. We cherish every moment we have. Life today is wonderful. Now we're just back to being what we wanted. It's just amazing to know that it's all behind us. Lucy's in our heart every day. She's buried right outside our home. Whatever scared her, we weren't, we weren't there to protect her and we can only keep her alive in our heart now. I think about Lucy all the time. To this day, I still don't know why was it that house? Why was it us? Why was it her? I am furious, and I will be to my dying day to lose her the way we did. That's what made me know 100% that there is other things in this world that you cannot see that can hurt you. mansion on the coast of Florida is rumored to house a terrifying ghost. It felt like looking into the face of sheer evil. Alive, he committed unspeakable atrocities. Someone died from a hanging right there. Dead, he continues his reign of terror. You didn't want to turn your back. You didn't want to close your eyes for fear of what might happen if you did. I was terrified. I was afraid for my children. I was afraid for myself. Whatever was there was after me. Will the family get out before it's too late? In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Among the waterways and marshes of the Escambia Bay in Pensacola, Florida, stands a majestic million dollar mansion. In the summer of 2009, Jennifer Wilburn and her two teenage daughters, Lauren and Candace, bask in the beauty of their new home. Before we moved to Florida, it was just the girls and I. I was a single mom, uh, trying to raise them, put them both through school, take care of all of their daily needs all by myself. I was like, wow, this is really my house. I was like, I'm dreaming. Somebody smack me and wake me up. <laughs> Hey, Jen, you about ready to go? I was until I came out here. 
Pretty spectacular, isn't it? Mm. A few months earlier, Jennifer and her high school sweetheart, Jamie, reconnected and got engaged. Together, they moved into their dream house. I found this beautiful home close to the water. It was the perfect family house because there was plenty of room for the kids. So Lauren, how many times did that guy call you today? When I first met Jamie, I absolutely loved him. Twice. No, it was three times. Like mother, like daughter, heartbreaker. He was really sweet, and you could tell he made mom happy. This is a guy that I can look up to as a dad. I figured that we would live there happily ever after, but that's not how it turned out. It turns out the beauty of the house and the surrounding land mask a violent history. Pensacola, Florida is one of the oldest European settlements in North America. By the mid-1800s, the native population had been completely overrun by new landowners. Cotton plantations flourished and slaves accounted for nearly half of Florida's growing population. You can imagine Escambia Bay being the waterway right on the property. It was definitely used in slave trading. Today, the horrors of the past are buried deep, but not dead. Someone has never been able to let go of the land or the house. Two weeks after moving into the house was when I actually noticed the first signs of something strange going on. I went upstairs and noticed that the pictures were hanging upside down on the wall, as if that's the way we had placed them. Initially, I thought that the girls might be playing a prank on me. Lauren? So I walked into my daughter's room. Lauren? And her windows were wide open. Candace? The blinds were pulled up. So you know the air condition is on. Why are all the windows in Lauren's room open? She hasn't even been here all day. I didn't open them. Well, well, somebody opened them. It wasn't me. So I suppose you didn't flip the picture in the hallway either, huh? Mom, what are you talking about? Oh, forget it. Just please keep the windows closed, OK? OK. I thought it was really weird but I decided not to pay too much attention to it, and I just put it to the side and tried not to think about it. Over the following months, Jennifer isn't the only one who senses something strange in the new house. A few weeks after moving in, Lauren and Candace enjoy girl time at home while their mom and Jamie are out. The first time something happened, Candace and I were alone in the house. What was that? I don't know. You stay here. I'll go check it out. And we kept hearing this noise upstairs, sound like somebody was walking around. I went into my mom's room, where the noise was coming from. Stay 
hers. What was it? I don't know. There was nobody up there. So we just kind of swept it under the rug and just assumed that it was the house. Probably nothing. Come on. A few nights later, Jennifer is alone in the kitchen when she senses a change in the air, as if someone were watching her. For the past months, Jennifer Welburn and her daughters have had the distinct feeling that they are not alone in their charming Escambia Bay, Florida mansion. I would walk around the house. I felt constantly like I was being watched. But I could never pinpoint what exactly it was. It was just a really eerie feeling. My grandfather, from before I was even born, had shared ghost stories that just got passed down. But I never really believed in any of it myself. You have to see it to believe it. But not too long after moving in, Jennifer has a terrifying encounter she can't explain. It felt like looking into the, the face of just sheer evil. I heard a blood-curdling scream, so I immediately ran down thinking that something very bad had happened. What's wrong? There's someone in the window. There's someone out there watching me. Oh. We went outside. And there was nothing there. No one, no sign of anyone. I just didn't see nothing. Well, whoever it was, they're gone now. Did you get a good look at them? No, but there was someone there. It was a man. He was, he was looking right at me. But Jamie doesn't believe her. It was probably just kids. You probably scared them just as much as they scared you. Somebody was there. Somebody was there. I think maybe the house is haunted or something. Haunted house? <laughs> You've been watching way too much television. You know that stuff doesn't even exist. Finally, I told her, let's just, you know, let it go and keep an eye on things, make sure everything's going to be fine, no problem. He didn't feel the house was haunted. He thought that I was crazy. There's no way to explain what's happening, so he just didn't want to hear any of it. Come on, let's just go on back in the house, OK? Come on back in. I was really a battle with myself because on one hand, I knew what I had seen. I knew what I'd experienced. Come on. And on the other hand, I really didn't believe it. Everything's all right. I just could not believe that I had a ghost in my house that was haunting it. At first, Jennifer keeps the unexpected intruder a secret from her daughters. I was worried because I had physically experienced something and seen something that no one else had. But she finally decides to bring it out in the open. I've sat down with the two girls and explained to them 
a little bit about what I thought and what I felt. And sure enough, they were experiencing the same types of events and emotions that I was. I finally felt like, okay, I'm not going crazy. Finally, someone else can see this too. Knowing that mom was going through the same thing definitely made me scared. When you're the only one feeling it, you're kind of like, well, maybe it's nothing, just kind of brushing under the rug. But to know that somebody else is experiencing the same things makes it more real and definitely a whole lot more scary. For the next few weeks, Talking about the haunting only heightens the fear in the house. As a parent, it was terrifying that my girls were having to witness a lot of the same things that I had. It was a difficult situation because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how I could help them. I couldn't even answer all of these questions for myself. Within a few months of moving in, tension is at an all-time high. Lauren finds herself walking around on eggshells in constant fear of the unknown and the unseen. I was in my room, and I turned around, and it was just a really eerie feeling. Something was in my closet. For the last few months, Lauren and Candace Welburn have been experiencing paranormal activity in their million-dollar Pensacola, Florida home. Everywhere they go, the teenagers sense evil. While their mother, Jennifer, is convinced she's seen a ghost. I was terrified. I was afraid for my children. I was afraid for myself. Jennifer's fiance, Jamie, doesn't believe her. Strange things were happening in the house, but I didn't believe in the paranormal. It was such a big house, I just thought that maybe she wasn't used to it because it has its own little creaks and sounds. Then one night, Lauren's instincts go on high alert when she feels a presence in her bedroom. I was in my room, and I turned around, and something was in my closet. I was petrified. It had this hold on me. It wouldn't let me call for help. I tried to scream out for my mom, but I couldn't get anything out. I felt absolutely helpless. I don't know how long it was, seconds, maybe minutes, before I was finally able to scream. I heard Lauren scream. Lauren, what happened? 
and could tell by the way she yelled for me that something had hurt her. <gasps> Honey, what's wrong? What's the matter? She picked her arm up to, to hang on to me, to cling on to me. She had two, it looked like claw marks. They looked fresh. It was pretty new, whatever had happened. Lauren remembers the man lunging at her, but not being scratched. What did you do to your arm? I don't remember ever being scratched or feeling pain. Seeing that there was completely horrifying for me. It really scared me. Jennifer fears that the ghost she saw in the window has now attacked her daughter. What happened? There was a, a, a man. She was scratched, look. Jamie has no idea what to think. Now both his fiance and her daughter are convinced the house is haunted. By what? The first thing that went through my mind is, how did it happen? Has she decided to hurt herself for attention, hurt herself and not want to tell us? I mean, I'm really concerned of what the surrounding circumstances are of how it actually happened. She doesn't know. There was a man. It attacked me. I'm not going back in there. I can't go back in there. You don't have to, honey. You don't have to. She was shaking, trembling. She didn't understand what had just happened to her. She didn't even really understand what she had just seen. As a parent, you protect your child, and I was not able to do that. I was terrified. Whatever it was definitely meant us harm. Jennifer decides to take no chances with her daughters. That night, we took Lauren and Candace, and we all slept in the same room. I didn't want my girls alone. I didn't want to be alone. We needed to be together where we could look out and protect one another. No longer able to hold back her anger, Jennifer confronts Jamie about the haunting. What are we going to do? About what? About the house. Lauren was attacked. I'm really worried. I don't know, Jen. I, I just can't believe this stuff is happening to us. In the world I live in, if someone's a threat, you can face it. And there, I felt like there's just nothing I could do. I couldn't really give them any peace of mind. I mean, what could I really say? It was really frustrating that Jamie did not believe. Well, I'm going to find someone, someone who can help us. OK. I knew that my house was haunted. I had to get help. I had to do something, because I did not know what was going to happen next. With the help of friends, Jennifer finds Tony Talley, a paranormal expert, and invites her to investigate the house. My name is Tony. I'm an empath, and that means that I feel things very deeply about environments and people. Right away, Tony feels that the energy surrounding the house is off. When I arrived on the property, something just didn't ring right. I felt very uncomfortable. The level of negativity made you feel like you had to look over your shoulder. You definitely knew something just wasn't right. Hi, I'm Tony. Jennifer reached out to me. My biggest hope with Miss Tony coming to the house was just to tell Jennifer that it's all in her head and go back to being life as normal and just forget about the whole thing. Hi, thank you so much for coming. How is Lauren? She is still really upset. You could just really see that Jen was wearing the stress. You could see tightness in her jaws. Her whole body language just really showed that she'd been under stress for a while. She was refusing to sleep in her room. Well, that's where I'd like to begin, in Lauren's room. Is it upstairs? Yes. It's the first door on your right.
Tony can immediately sense an evil force at work when, suddenly... That dark energy, he had written his name in the mirror. H-A-L, Hal. I was awestruck. I wanted to run. For more haunting, visit DestinationAmerica.com. For the past few months, Jennifer and her two teenage daughters have been spooked by what they believe is a ghost in their Pensacola, Florida home. Then, Jennifer's oldest daughter, Lauren, is attacked. Lauren! Honey, what's wrong? As I saw the marks on her arm, I was terrified. I knew that if it had attacked her, on this level, I was afraid what was going to be next. A skeptic of the paranormal, Jennifer's fiance, Jamie, has been no source of comfort. I just thought people were just a little overdramatic. If the wind blew, they'd blame it on a ghost. I quite frankly didn't believe in it. Feeling desperate and alone in her fight, Jennifer calls upon Tony Talley an empath with the ability to feel the presence of entities from other worlds. My biggest hope was that Miss Tony would be able to come in and give us our house and our lives back again. It doesn't take long for the ghost to introduce himself. There was a large mirror that had partially fogged and that dark energy, he had written his name in the mirror, H-A-L, Hal. I was up close and personal and in a one-sided fist fight with dark evil energy. You are not welcome here. You must leave this house. You hear about things like this, but till you see it with your own eyes, you just always kind of have a little bit of doubt when you hear other people talk about it. Well, now here I am in the situation that I can't doubt the people that have invited me. On the inside, it made me feel nervous. Even though I was very afraid, the family needed me to be stable and confident to get this energy out of their home. The only spirit welcome in this house is the spirit of God. ghost of Hal eventually draws Tony to the backyard, where a feeling of dread immediately washes over her. As I made my way around the outside of the home, it became very clear that a lot of lives were lost on that property. As an empath, coming in contact with that kind of feeling is extreme sadness. And then, she sees them. I had a flash vision of multiple people hanging from the trees. The men appear to be slaves. The house sits near Escambia Bay, believed to have been the site of a slave plantation in the 19th century. According to Tony's vision, how? was the plantation's slave master. I came to the conclusion that this entity, Hal, was over the slaves, somebody who mistreated the slaves. These are people that died without their last rights. They died under the most cruel circumstances. I knew this house had a very dark presence. I knew the family was in danger.
Tony gathers the family together and confirms their worst nightmare. Their house is haunted by an evil ghost. I know who attacked Lauren. His name is Hal. And he used to live on this land. Hal was a plantation master. It was ingrained in his personality to be cruel and inhumane. And he brought that with him into his afterlife. I could see Hal to be in excess of 6'2", very large build, very balded looking, a scour across his face all the time. You could see the meanness on this person from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. If he were to laugh or smile, it would be at somebody else's weakness or pain. I had not told her anything about what he looked like or what we had actually seen. She came in and described it to a T. I wanted to feel relieved, but I didn't. I felt more terrified knowing that someone who was an expert in this sort of thing had seen the exact same figure that I had seen. It actually made me more scared to be at the house. So how do we get rid of him? I believe. We need to do a house cleansing. And I'm going to start in Lauren's room. At this point in time, I was willing to try anything to reclaim my house. It was surreal that Miss Tony was able to validate some of the things that were going on there. One half of me, I wanted to believe her, and the other half of me still didn't. I hereby banish all negative energy from this house. I knew that at that point, the mission was to rid the house of all that darkness and all that evilness. Through the power of light and love. For the next few days, the family senses a levity in the house, as if Hal has disappeared. After the cleansing on the house, it just felt completely different. It felt like it had felt when we first moved in. We had this little glimmer of hope that the cleansing had worked. Everybody in the house just had an initial sigh of relief. Like, oh, this is done, it's, it's finished. I was incredibly hopeful that we were going to get our life back, that the house was going to once again be my dream home. But the peaceful state of the house is about to come to an abrupt end. Hal is back. Ever since they moved into their million-dollar mansion in Pensacola, Florida, Jennifer and her teenage daughters have been tormented by the ghost of a former slave plantation master named Hal. All of us were scared. There was a lot of tension in the house because we didn't know what to expect anymore. In the fall of 2009, despite her fiancé Jamie's disbelief in ghosts, Jennifer brings in an expert to cleanse the house of the evil spirit. But she soon finds out it didn't work. He was back, and he was back with a vengeance. I felt a, just a kind of a, a grip on my ankle. I have this just gripping fear go through my body, like this is someone trying to hurt me. I knew that someone was under my bed. Being a good Southern Christian boy, I keep a black Bible right by my bed with a 45 loaded and cocked right on top of it. What is it? There's someone under the bed. I was terrified. I didn't realize what was going on and, and what was happening. You got three seconds to come out. I'm going to open fire. 
I just wanted to get at it and I wanted to inflict pain on it. There was nothing there, nothing. That was impossible and it freaked me out. Jamie realizes he's up against the same evil force that's been after his family. And now it's after him. This is my house! I just lost it. This is my house! I went on a tirade. This is my house! A normal person would probably think I was insane. You want to bully somebody? Bully me! I felt so helpless. This is my house! I have a loaded 45 and I can't defend myself. I knew that this was how. He wanted to ruin my life and my family, and he was not going to stop till he did. It was completely terrifying to know that whatever this was could pull a man out of bed like it did. It terrified all of us. For Jamie, this was the first time that he knew in his heart of hearts that the house really was haunted. It caused him to feel like he wasn't in charge of his household anymore. There was something there that was bigger, something there that had more control that scared Jamie. With nowhere else to turn, Jennifer pleads with empath Tony Talley to come to their aid once again. I was hopeful that she might still be able to help us. Maybe something was just inadvertently left out the first time that would completely cleanse the house and give us back our home and our family. That night, Tony returns to do a second cleansing. 18-year-old Lauren and 17-year-old Candace are not present. I need you to remain in prayer with me and focus your energy. I hereby banish all negative energy from this home. When I was invited to come back to the home the second time. The Lord is my shepherd. After walking through and blessing and praying again, I knew it would take divine intervention to be able to get that dark energy out of there. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. It made me very afraid for the family, afraid for the teenage daughters, afraid for anybody else really that would come into that home. All at once, there was a very large thud on the wall directly behind me. Tony has made someone angry. I just kind of like lost the feeling of direction. What's your fear of She just does an immediate stop. <laughs> and gets thrown back against the wall. Tony! It felt like somebody had punched me. My arm. What? And she takes her hand away, and it's pretty obvious that something. <gasps> oh my God, what is that? The only way to describe it looked like something bitter. It was gruesome. I mean, it was bad. Oh, it made me feel like I was up against the most evil thing I've ever faced in my life. Tony reluctantly claims defeat. It appears Hal has won. I can't help you anymore. Everything until now has just been a warning. Miss Tony said that she didn't feel that she alone would be enough to rid the house and the land from Hal. I knew Hal was not going to leave. This energy that Hal is, this, this is beyond where my expertise lies. Hal's energy was just not going to go easily. It really required divine intervention. I'll find someone to help you. But I can't tell you what to do. Only your hearts can do that. She said that there was not going to be a happy ending. That this is only going to get worse. She really felt that we were in danger. It was devastating because you spend most of your life thinking and dreaming about an opportunity to live in a house like that, 5,000 square foot, and it turns out to be a living nightmare.
For now, Jamie and Jennifer decide to keep Hal's attack on Tony a secret from the girls. But they do tell them they are thinking about moving. I was ready to be out of that house and try to get the normalcy back in our lives. But after everything that had happened, I was just, I was ready to go. But it won't be soon enough. I went into my mom's closet. For the past seven months, Jennifer and her family have been living in a haunted million-dollar mansion near Escambia Bay, Florida, while an angry ghost targets family members one by one. An empath has had visions of a ghost named Hal, who she believes used to be a slave plantation master. He's angry. I was scared to death. He was a bully. He liked being in control. He liked people to be afraid of him. And has warned them they are in great danger. The family makes plans to move out of what was once their dream house as soon as possible. When Miss Tony shared with us that we were in danger, Jamie and I decided to have a serious talk about the house. We didn't know where we would go but we didn't know what else to do. We had to think about the girls. I saw this shadow figure and I knew that it was Hal. I felt this burning feeling on the back of my neck. I just remember it hurting so bad. What? My God! She had a scratch going from the base of her hairline halfway down her back. For Jennifer, this is the last straw. We are leaving right now. It was at this point that I said, I, I don't care. My kids, this, this is not worth this. I, I don't care about the house. I want out, and I want out now. As much as I had loved the house, I didn't want it. I didn't care about having my own room anymore. I didn't care about how big the house was. I was done. I couldn't handle that house anymore. Come on, Candace. Come on. Doesn't matter what it costs. Doesn't matter what the devastation is financially. It's time to say goodbye, cut our losses, and get my family to safety. As crazy as it sounds, I felt like I was in a fight with what was in that house. Girls, come on, get in the car. Let's go. Get in, please. Come on. And I've never walked away from a fight. That's the moment I had to concede that it won, that I would have to take my hit and move on. I focus straight, I put that car in drive, and never look back. After this happened, we were struggling financially for a little while because all of our money was tied up in the house. We sold the house back to the bank and the house that we paid a million dollars for was sold for $119,000. I'm very blessed that we were able to get out unhurt and relocate and have our family together and safe. It was a very, very difficult time. Before I moved into the house, I did not believe in ghosts at all. I don't know that it's something that I'll ever fully put behind me. I think that it's something that I'll always deal with. 
I completely believe in the paranormal now. Whereas before, I would laugh at anybody that said it. Until you live it, don't judge it, because it is real. I was very sick for the next few years after coming in contact with that house. I had to have an emergency surgery. They removed a mystery four-pound tumor that had doubled my intestine in half. It was life-threatening. I stopped doing house blessings altogether. I believe that opens a gateway that invites dark, evil energy. I don't think I'll ever be the same again. I don't really think there's any way you could. You can't experience things happening like this to your family, things happening like this in your own home, and, and forget about it. It changes who you are. I don't know if whatever this was has manifested itself at all to the people that are living there now, but I have no doubt it's still there. <laughs>